Hello and welcome to Rising Stars. I'm Vikram Oza. Here we're talking about a firm which is in the edtech space. Uh, Emoticus is what it's called. It offers degree courses in financial services and analytics. Uh, a company that started off in 2012. The idea is to help professionals upscale their careers with degree courses in uh, subjects like robotics, in machine learning, there's blockchain, design analytics. Nikhil Barshikar is the managing director over at Emoticus Learning and he's our rising star today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Nikhil, do tell me, uh, obviously you come from the financial services space, yeah. having worked with Nomura and of course the, the dreaded Lehman Brothers as well, <laughs> and that was a sizable chunk of your uh, profile Absolutely. before you started in Martigas. Sure. So I, uh, you know, it makes sense that you wanted to be in the fintech space and being in the edtech space within that entire large universe. But do tell me, when you entered, at that point in time, there were several possibilities, because when you talk about skill gaps, there is... Uh, Every industry speaks about it. Absolutely. So why did you go in this direction? I think one of the big things, uh, as I saw in my career with Lehman Brothers, uh, and specifically I moved from the U.S. to India yeah. to, help, uh, to help set up the Lehman Brothers franchise. One of the big things we saw with Lehman Brothers was that the skill gap, even in finance industry, which people talked a lot about it, was still very, very clear to me about eight, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we were trying to scale that particular organization to about 3,000 people, and we could never find the right people. We spent six months looking for the people, nine months training them, and then leave after the tenth month. Yes. So inherently, the skill gap we saw was very, very clear in finance industry. Uh, our our uh, background was clearly finance and investment banking and capital markets. It's yes. a space that we understood well. And we thought that was very clear. For if we want to do an education business that's profitable, that's sustainable, that has to come from domain that we understand. So to us, it was a logical uh, sort of conclusion. It does make sense. Yeah. But also, you decided to go the B2B and the B2C route. Yeah. And I understand B2C is a larger contributor to revenues. Uh, so uh, why did you decide to kind of keep both in place? So actually, when we started off, we started off just the B2C route. Uh, our initial idea was to actually take people, train them, and place them in different investment banks and financial service firms. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea. That's what we did for a year, year and a half. We got very successful at it. We got very good at it. And we had B2B guys coming and telling us, look, you know, seem to know what you're doing. Why don't you come and train our employees? Right. So we actually got dragged into the, the B2B business. We ended up liking it. it gives us a great balance between the two businesses. Sure. The B2B side helps us understand what the company, uh, what the company needs, uh, what it requ requires from its manpower, mm -hmm. and we can take that knowledge and inculcate it into our curriculum on the B2C side. But what did it materially take to set up this business? Because obviously you need uh, great educators out there, and those, when you talk about skill gaps, that's a big uh, skip as well. So sure. to be able to find the right talent uh, to impart the kind of education that you require as uh, professional degree courses and what the industry requires, that must be a tough ask uh, back then too. Absolutely. So I think when we started off, our biggest challenge was, to your point, finding the right people. Yeah. Because we couldn't go, frankly, to the academic world. The very idea was we were bridging the academic world and you the industry. You wanted to get out of that. Yeah, right? we were bu building the industry as such and bridging it together. So actually then going to uh, people with 10 years plus work of experience, their first port of call is, well, I'm a successful professional here. Please don't ask me to come out, my, out of my career and teach. Uh -huh. So I think that was a significant amount of uh, time spent in finding the right people, people who had uh, teaching as a passion that they wanted to do, uh, and they wanted to sort of you know, give to the younger generation what they had learned over the 10 to 15 years. So I remember in my early days, we kept looking for the right uh, professors or the, the right people in the et cetera. And I remember me and my leadership taking, doing most of the training at, at the first year. Yes, that's uh, typically how it happens yeah, with startups, right? Then you we do everything have, yourself. Absolutely. I, I think we still do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think from there we've moved on. I think we are, uh, we are, as a firm, we are a viable career for people who want to actually make a uh, career in training in finance and analytics, and I think very few firms offer that. Yeah. Uh, so today, if you're an investment banking professional, I think, and if you want to teach, I think you're doing that on the side, but there is no full-time opportunity. I think Amarticus offers that to now about 25 full-time teachers that we have on our payroll. So I realize that, uh, Nikhil, you have gone the offline route as much as the online route, and I sure. just want to get an understanding because uh, when you're trying to expand, yes, you want to be in as much geography as possible, and uh, you want to expand the business very quickly. But uh, cost-wise, you would take a hit, I would understand, because of the centers that you have to create. Uh, tell me how it's worked for you so far. So I think when we started off the business, uh, like I said earlier, I think we completely went the offline way. And slowly and surely, as we got more comfortable with the courses, then we started to take them online. 
Um, I think from a cost differential perspective, frankly, there's not a lot of difference between the offline and online. Mm -hmm. What you save on infrastructure in the offline space, you spend more on the online acquisition piece. Right. Um, we're starting to see some cost differential more internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually cater to the African and UAE markets, and there we're starting to see some cost differential between offline ah, and online. Right. Um, in terms of actually, uh, my earlier point was around uh, outcome-based. Uh, making sure that we offer the right type of course with the right type of delivery model uh, to to meet meet those outcomes is what is key. Correct. Uh, so I think that's where we are headed towards. Yes, but your courses, the way you design them, I'm sure you're taking a lot of industry perspective as sure. well. Absolutely. Uh, but because your clientele is also B2B, uh, a lot of companies would be coming to you and saying that design a course specifically suited for our company. Do you do that? And if so, then. Is that a sizable chunk of your business that could potentially grow in the future? Absolutely. So I think you, you've hit it on the nail. Our B2B uh, customers are extremely uh, uh, customized in their learning. They're looking for specific courses for a specific audience. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that particular business, we need to be flexible and we need to make sure that we meet the demands of that client. Right. Uh, what we, need to, we also do is we offer courses, we offer sourcing, we offer management development programs, we offer online programs with the intention of being sort of a holistic uh, knowledge player in that space for our B2B right. uh, customers. Right. So I understand the plans and uh, clearly you did mention in Africa and Southeast Asia and by way of expansion Absolutely. that's what you're targeting. How are you sorted by way of funding? Uh, you raised uh, one million uh, US dollars and that's through a single investor but uh, sure. going ahead the need for more funding uh, would only be more pronounced. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, somebody once said, never say, say no to funding. <laughs> but um, I, I think uh, this year has been extremely good for us. We've been fairly profitable. Obviously, we'll invest that back into the business. Uh, we're looking to grow uh, exponentially this year again. Uh, last year, we grew a rate of 80%. To, uh, this year, uh, next year, we'll grow what 120%. So you completely right. It requires funds, but more importantly, it requires the right partner. Yes. I think um, if a strategic partner came along, we'd be extremely interested in that. That's fantastic. Uh, we wish you great luck on this entire journey. Uh, thanks very much, Nikhil, for joining us and being part you. of Rising thank Stars. Uh, we will be checking in with you in the future to see how the entire tech space is uh, panning out and indeed your business too. Absolutely. Thank you. That's Nikhil uh, Bashikar. As far as the business of iMarticus uh, Learning is concerned, telling us about how the business is panning out and there will be many more entrepreneurs here on uh, Rising Stars. Do stay tuned. Thanks for joining us.